what is going on and welcome back to the channel. So today, while we wait for the heads to come back for the 05 STI and that EJ25 over there, I wanted to go over the build of the EG33 since I have the short block back, which it still needs to be sent back down to out front to get that issue fixed. Um, no big deal, we'll get that taken care of. But while I have both of these motors on the stands, I wanna go over the build on the EG33 covering what all is done to that short block, what all is done to the heads, because I know there's a lot of people out there who wanna know just what the modification path for this is. And I cannot take credit for all of this. Huge shout out to Outfront for helping me with this build list on this EG33, because if it was just me, your boy would be like incredibly lost. Uh, yes, it is similar to an EJ, but it's still a completely different motor. Now on the left is our EG33, on the right is our EJ25. Now there's a lot of similarities between both of these motors, which is why I wanted to go with an EG33 over an EZ30 or an EZ36. Think of this EG33 as an EJ22T with an extra cylinder added onto it. Now some of just the off the hand similarities is they both use very similar style water pumps. I can almost guarantee you I could take that water pump off of this EJ and put it onto this EG over here. I could probably take that timing belt set up put that over here as well and it bolts right up. They both use very similar bolt patterns for, and you know what, I could probably pull that oil pump off that EJ and put that on the EG. I also have not confirmed that one though, but I'm pretty sure it's the exact same. Uh, they both use the same flywheel and clutch setup. So I could take the flywheel, the ACT flywheel on this motor, bolt it up to this one, drop it in the car. So there's just a lot more similarities when it comes to both of these engines rather than snagging like an EZ30 or an EZ36. Very different style engine at that point because you have just a different rod setup, different internal setup. Whole front facing is a timing chain versus a timing belt. But we'll get into some of the timing stuff on this because this does differ significantly in timing than it would from an EG or from an EJ over here. I'm getting my words mixed up. There's too many EGs and EJs. So to start things off, we're gonna go over how much it costs me to do this and what all is done to the short block. So that way, if any of you guys wanna replicate this build, uh, you have all of the information to be able to do so. So obviously, EG33, I had to buy the short block somewhere. So I went on eBay. I think I paid around $1,000 for a complete long block shipped. Uh, you can buy whole parts cards for that same price, but I didn't need the entire car. So, I mean, I did end up spending a little bit more on just this long block than necessary. But after the long block was purchased, I stripped it down, stripped the case halves down, pulled everything apart just to reduce a little bit of cost. So that way they didn't, they didn't have to disassemble everything. So once the short block got down to out front motors, uh, they obviously started off by closed decking the entire thing. As you can see, all of the coolant jackets have had material pressed in them at this point uh, to close deck this short block. Now there are still obviously coolant passages so that way coolant and oil can still flow through these to keep the motor cool and lubricated. But the closed decking cost was about $1,000 just to get this closed decked. Uh, we also went through and did a bore power hone uh, with torque plates. I don't know what the torque plates consist, consist of, but that was about $375 for them to go through here. Recross hatch everything and make everything look beautiful again. Um, and so that way our piston rings on our new pistons would seal properly. Now with the pistons, because this is where things get a little bit custom with these other short blocks is these pistons are made by CP. When we had these pistons made, uh, we decided to go with a 9.2 to one compression ratio. Uh, obviously we want something that's gonna be able to hold boost extremely well because we are gonna be running a lot of boost through this motor. I'm anticipating around 35 to 40 PSI on a precision uh, 76 series turbo. So we wanted to make sure that it would hold boost well and the compression would still be good for what we were shooting for. Um, so obviously the pistons were not the cheapest. They came in at about $1,100 just just for six of them, uh, I, but I mean, that's actually not that bad when you consider that pistons for an EJ are probably about $600 also. Uh, and once you start getting up into this territory for horsepower, around 1200 horsepower, you're gonna start spending a little bit money, a little bit more money on top of that. Now for them to go through there, I obviously had them clean up the short block as well. That was another hundred dollars, which wasn't too bad. Now we did have them go through here and drill out all of the head stud holes. Uh, we are not gonna be running half inch head studs in this motor, just because like I said, we wanna be able to make sure that the head doesn't lift. We have proper sealing with our head gaskets. Um, and since we're running so much power, we want a lot of strength between the short block and the head. So half inch head studs, not too bad for them to drill it up. It was about $200. Uh, and then for the head studs themselves, those were around $640 for out front's ARP head stud kit, which once again, half inch. Now, as for our rods, obviously you cannot see them that well aside from where they connect up to the crankshaft. But these, this is one thing that is actually really nice about this EG block is that the rods are the exact same as they would be on an EJ257. So these are just EJ257 STI rods. They're manly H tough 
rods. That's just weird to say. I don't know why that felt so weird to say, but they're just mainly H-Tough rods. Um, having a six cylinder, we don't have to stress the cylinders as much as we would as a four cylinder. So these should be completely fine for what we are shooting for. They look pretty good in there also. Looking pretty good. Uh, and then as for the crank, because I know a lot of people were asking me what exactly did I do to this crankshaft? This is just an OEM EG33 crankshaft that has been nitrated. So the nitrate coating on there obviously is just going to help with power and keep down the wear on the crankshaft a little bit more. Uh, I think to have it nitrated was another $200. We also just polished um, anywhere that a mating surface would be on here. So to have them polish it, only $40, not too bad. Uh, we had the rotating assembly balanced as well, which came out to another $250. Whenever you're swapping rods, pistons, things like that, you do wanna make sure that everything is balanced properly. So that way uh, the rotational mass of the crankshaft itself isn't being thrown off once you just start smacking some new parts on there. And then for the bearings, we just went with King. So we have King Performance rod bearings and King Subaru EJ Thrust uh, Position 3 STD Performance main bearing set. Uh, so just to give you guys the full description there, if any of you guys wanted to do something similar. So it's very similar to an EJ setup would be when you go to start building an EJ. And like I said, that is one of the major reasons why I wanted to go with this EG is just because there are so many similarities between this one and that EJ25 over there on the other engine stand. Short block rated to about 1200 horsepower should make some good sauce when the time comes to throw this thing in the car. Um, as you guys are aware down here, you can see right where the damage happened in shipping. So unfortunately that is one of our motor mount areas. We have a motor mount here, here, and then the third one being right down there. And we just, it would stress the block too much to only have these front two motor mounts on there. Um, it would just put way too much stress back there that the continuation of this crack would just keep going through this case half. So out front is making it right. Um, they already are machining new case halves for us. So this one is going to have to be sent back down to out front. They'll just swap everything from this one over to the new case halves. And then we can start building this thing in the heads on there but speaking of heads let's go take a look at the heads for this thing all right you guys so let's take a look at the head now before we even get into this i am going to start with the cams because i did not have out front do the cams these are stock eg33 cams i had a lot of you guys asking me hey what did i do for cams on this engine these are reground cams i had a local company called delta cams go through here and regrind these cams from stock to 282 cams so essentially what they did is they just welded on material to all of the lobes of the cams and then they went through and ground them down to the point where the duration of the cam would meet what we want. So these are stock EG cams that have been reground to become 282s. Just because there are no real aftermarket cam options for this motor, uh, you kind of got to work with what you got. So having these reground to become what we needed worked out awesome. Now, what else is done to the heads? I obviously had the heads hot tanked and cleaned up just because there was 26 years of just grime, grease, dirt, grossness all over these, all just all over the engine itself. So they went through, they hot tanked everything, cleaned it all up. These look brand new. They did an incredible job on the valve cover as well. Um, I wasn't even anticipating them to do it, but it's completely polished, looks beautiful. Uh, honestly, couldn't be happier with the way that it came out, but we're not here to look at shiny valve covers. So when it comes to how these work, these work the exact same as EJ25 heads do. It's a bucket over valve system, so that way you're not having to go through there, adjust like the valve lash and everything like that with a nut and screw. They're actually buckets, which is kind of nice. It's a little bit more modern for what they were doing in 1995. So we went through, we got all new buckets to set valve lash accordingly. I don't recall what it is off the top of my head. I'd have to look at the paperwork that came with the motor. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of glaze past that. If you guys wanna know what that is, just let me know down in the comments. I'll, I'll put that information in as well. Now, as for the valves, we did go with Super Tech valves. Let me fold this guy over here. This thing's heavy. So as you can see on this side, these are our intake valves. These are our exhaust valves. Now on the intake side, I did have these heads ported and polished. So we have a stage one race port on here. So we have a plus one on the intake valves. Uh, just kind of needed to do what we needed to do there to get everything to fit and seat properly. Uh, like I said, these were old. They may have been decked once or twice in the past. I highly doubt it. Uh, but just because we are shooting for a lot of power, we wanted to go with a slightly bigger valve. So it never hurts to do so. Now, as for the valves on this head, we did go with SuperTech valves just because that was what was widely available uh, and what we decided to go with on this. The intake valves did come in at about $166-ish. Um, they are nitrated, coated, 
just what we ended up going with. As for the exhaust side, I believe these are stock size because we did not do any porting on the exhaust side. The exhaust valves were about 213, 14 ish dollars, somewhere in that range. Uh, we also obviously had the heads decked while they were down there as well, just so that way we could get a good mating surface for our head gasket. Now on this side of the heads, they are obviously machined to half inch head studs as well, just to show you guys what one of the half inch ones look like. Um, they are fairly beefy head studs. Let me see if I can push one of these out of here. So they are fairly beefy head studs. These are probably the biggest heads. These actually are the biggest head studs I've ran on any build prior. Um, so half inch head studs, looking forward to being able to put those in and actually bolt these heads up over to our short block over there. As for valve springs, just to wrap up the valve section of these, we did go super tech valve springs as well. Those came in at about $700 um, for all of the ports. Just remember, we do have two more cylinders than we would on a standard EJ. So cost on this stuff is going to be more expensive than it would be otherwise. And then that kind of wraps it up for what's going on with the heads here. Um, if you guys are curious on what we're doing for head gaskets, we are going with these Cometic head gaskets. Uh, thickness on these is 0.051 mil. Um, so they should give a pretty solid ceiling surface. We have one for each head, obviously. And uh, they look good. Who doesn't like Cometic head gaskets? Now, just to show you guys the porting on these, I don't know how well you're actually gonna be able to see it, but they did go through here and port all of these as much as possible for their stage one package. They went through, polished the insides of them as well. So this should help with airflow a lot more. We've got cams, valves, ported. So this should give a lot of good free flowing air. Now, something I do wanna show you guys on these heads because it is very different than an EJ is that you only have one cam gear on these. Even though it's a dual overhead cam system, you only have one cam gear and it sits right here on the end of the exhaust snout. Now on the inside of the head right here, you do have two internal gears which controls timing on the engine. Uh, and the way you time it is there's a couple little dots on the inside there. I'm not 100% sure on how to time this yet. When the time comes when we start assembling this and we start getting timing set on this, I will walk you guys through it if any of you are interested in learning how to time an EG33. But uh, it's just a really different and weird setup than what we're used to in the past with EJs. Uh, just because we normally have two cam gears on the outside of the engine and on this one we only have one with the internal splined gear. One of these cams is also sprung as well. So when you go to disassemble these, you do need to make sure that the service screw is in the intake cam uh, just so it doesn't become unsprung and then you're not gonna be able to fully reassemble these properly. So. I think that about wraps it up for these. Now, for anyone who is curious on about how much this costs to build, keep in mind, you have all these other expenses like exhaust manifolds, ECUs, turbo, all this other stuff that's gonna compound on top of this. So just having this long block setup with the cost of having the cams reground and the cost of buying the EG33 long block at the very beginning, the very stock one, I think I'm sitting at around $12,000 to $12,500 on a setup like this. So if you guys are looking to do a swap like this where you wanna make a ton of power with a flat six and go all out build with it, keep in mind it is not the most cost effective way to do it. You can make very similar power for very similar cost, monies, expenditure, whatever you wanna call it with an EJ if you really wanna take it that that far. But being able to do it with an EG just relieves stress a little bit more off the motor because you have two extra cylinders, you are just that much more capable of making power, and it's just going to sound like a gnarly turbo Porsche hopefully when it's done. So I mean, who doesn't want that? So I hope this answers a lot of your guys' questions when it comes to what parts I used, what all is done to that short block, why did I go with an EG33 over an EZ30 or an EZ36. It's just the similarities between this EG and EJs, which I have a lot of experience with in the past, is just a little bit easier for me. This is my first big motor swap um, that I've ever done. So trying to keep some similarities between this new motor and the old one will just help out when it comes to doing the swap. So I think that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you guys are looking for a similar setup or build, feel free to hit up Outfront Motors. I believe they're located down in like, they're somewhere in like South, South California, somewhere down there. They're the only ones that I have found that will even touch building an EG33. They did do an amazing job. Uh, we are getting the damaged case half situation taken care of, and I'm extremely excited to be able to get this one swapped out with the new one. So that way we can actually start building this thing and getting it fitted up into our 17 STI out there. That's just kind of sitting in the snow looking sad. So. That's all I got for you guys. If you liked the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, uh, magenta, cyan, aqua, tangerine, yellow, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up because you don't want to miss either this EJ or that EG making some power because this blob eye behind me is about to go here to the dyno in a couple of weeks, assuming that we don't have any more problems, but we swapped out every single part on the motor, so we shouldn't have any more problems. It... Anyways, if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.